Hello and welcome back and picture the scene. I am about seven hours away from flying out to Shenzhen, China to visit a bunch of brands that I talk about here on the channel. It's something we did earlier this year and we're redoing it today. Visit brands, seeing their workflow, seeing their culture, ultimately finding out more about these brands that we talk about on the channel. And I'm not even ready. Right now I'm still drinking my terrible coffee that I've got here poorly made on the go. I've not sorted out my hair and even my packing's not done. But despite all of that, about 30 minutes ago, I learned about this device, the Minisforum MS02 Ultra. Now, for those that have followed this brand for a while, you'll know that the MS01 workstation, released about a year and a half ago at this point, depending on where you are in the world, was pretty much the darling of mini PCs, really taking it seriously with its Ultra i9 processor, 10 GBE on board, a crap load of memory, but still supplying three M.2 NVMe bays, a PCIe upgrade slot, and basically being hench as all hell, while still being mini. And although Minis Forum have released different solutions in the last few years, a lot of users always make comparison to this box, particularly those that still prefer Intel processors. And now, thanks to an event taking place in Japan, uh, the Japanese IT Week, which hopefully we will cover next year, by the way, uh, thanks to this event, let's move the camera over there, um, they started showing off some of their newer solutions, not even waiting until CES or anything like that. And the big, big one here was this, the MS-02 Ultra, the true sequel to the MS-01. Now, this thing is redonkulous in terms of its hardware spec. To put this into perspective, not only are we looking at an Intel Ultra 9 processor then, so they've gone from core now into that HX series um, of processors for this system, but alongside that, we have got four M.2 NVMe slots, which is something I care about, support of ECC memory, which I know a lot of you guys care about, but the big one here for me is here on the right-hand side of the screen. If we get that moved over there, support of 25 GBE. That is big, because a lot of people, myself included, have started talking about the introduction of 25 gigabit networking more affordably into home lab setups there. 10 GBE is great, but I do think now we're starting to see systems like this that rock out right there, as you can see, with um, Gen 4 times 4 M.2 NVMe architecture, there is an argument here that... Having 10 GBE is just still going to remove something of a throttled point. So this is an incredibly powerful system. But luckily, we don't have to just read from this spec sheet. We don't even have to go to Minis Forum's own page. Because luckily, we can head over to PC Watch, a Japanese-based forum website. I'll link to it in the description below. And during that event that we just talked about, they had hands-on. And seriously, this thing looks incredible. I know you might get sick of me saying this, but again, mini PCs notwithstanding not being that many anymore, they are becoming serious players and contenders versus standard desktop systems there. There's really only the limitations of GPU cards at this point that separate the two different desktop platforms there. And again, as we go through PC Watch's site here, they go into a tremendous amount of detail about the slideshow that were put on by Minis Forum during this event. And luckily, and again, we'll link to their article below, um, we can go through some of these images because we're already seeing the use of that MSS1 Max chassis there, that large scale still not quite mini PC, but definitely not a shuttle, uh, definitely not a shuttle or a desktop system. And again, they've gone for some really interesting profiling there in between where things are mounted. So as we go through some of these images, we can see a little bit more. Again, we've met Jack Zhang uh, on previous instances here on the channel at uh, Computex. So hello, if you're watching this Minis Forum. Um, so again, obviously this is uh, them talking about the derivation and the upgrade from the MS-01. A lot of users that have been using that workstation and particularly clustering them and HA in them, um, together have been kind of waiting on a, a real true successor to that system there so again going through some of the slides they show during it we can learn more a little bit more about that processor i wouldn't be surprised if they come up with two different cpu SKUs for this also we've got to talk a little bit about that cpu this has got 24 lanes to play with there of gen 4 and gen 5 architecture that is a heck of a lot of internal bandwidth and that's why we're seeing such high performance numbers on the pcie options and the m.2 options as well keep in mind of course a cpu of this scale the tdp is going to be billy bonkers but still 
as mini systems go, and again, the word mini is getting a bad back there. This is a heck of a CPU to be seeing integrated here. It's just another further innovation we're seeing on a lot of these high profile CPUs that over the years, People have wanted in kind of a mobile SOC version or more compact version, and really this is one of the best examples. 24 cores, and that's eight performance cores as well. There's a lot to love here, and yes, NAS deployment of this, you're probably going more towards virtualization, going you know towards local AI deployments, of course, and MPU support quite significantly uh, featured as well on that CPU, but still, as processors go, as a follow-up to the 13th generation i9 and its predecessor, this is a heck of a scale-up. The mentioning of the system featuring three PCIe slots I think is quite intriguing because I do wonder if one of those slots is being occupied by a 25 gig card by default or if there's going to be different uh, configuration options of this. Are they going to price it out? Not so much with just different PSUs, which is a uh, CPU, something they've done before, but at the same time, is there going to be a non-25 gig version or is there going to be an AI-assisted one where the graphics card is included but interestingly look at that spec for those PCIe's a times 516 slot I'm assuming it's not going to be full it's going to be physical times 16 but limited down but still nonetheless you've still got plenty of there to play with although I do wonder about how they'll be cut apart there in terms of bifurcation um, again going through more of the slides we'll learn more about that CPU again we can find out more on that later on I think there is definitely uh, the tide turn, of course, towards AMD over Intel, but still, there are still Intel diehards overall that are going to be really pleased to hear about this. We'll skip past the Cinebench and the synthetic reports there. Talking a lot more about the cooling system, something we've already talked about before on the MS S1 Max. Uh, RAM, ECC support, baby. Intel and ECC support particularly on a mini PC, is super annoyingly rare. So I'm really pleased to see that being integrated here. We'll carry on through the slides. Again, ECC, we'd already talked about that before. But it's that networking there that I'd really like to talk about. 25 gig and 10 GBE and 2.5 gig for shits and giggles. With that 2.5 gig being the Intel V Pro kind of remote BIOS level uh, control of the system, which again is growing in popularity, particularly when people like me are really enjoying using these systems as NAS servers. Remember four M.2s there? A lot of potential there. Um, and again, they've gone ahead much like with the S1 Max, rolling in USB 4 V2 ports there. So Technically, these are Thunderbolt 5 without the licensing. We've talked about this on uh, in the comments of the previous videos. So again, whether that will result in true Thunderbolt 5 compatibility, I've been trying to do some experimentation on the MSS1 Max uh, with uh, Thunderbolt 5 dock, and I've not really had much luck, so it's definitely not as clear-cut as that, but more of that we'll look into in a future video there. And again, an internal PSU. I mean, man alive. I did not expect that, particularly when you're thinking about active cooling, um, uh, passive cooling with a lot of those heat sinks and just general airflow. I am surprised this has gone internal PSU. I know everyone's going to be happy about that, but still very, very surprised on that in terms of uh, the architecture of this. And just generally uh, going back to that main spreadsheet here, there's just a lot of love here. And if there was ever going to be a true successor to the MS01, this is kind of it. I mean, we don't know the pricing, but realistically, it ain't going to be cheap. I think we are going to be tippy-toeing more towards that 2000 price point there. Definitely more than a K, maybe 1500 if we're lucky. Uh, it all depends, really, if there's going to be variations of this hardware architecture down the road and whether 25 GBE is going to be standard or if that's going to be kind of a flexible give and take for some users. And interestingly, despite the preponderance of, you know, PPTX spreadsheet stuff being shown here on PC Watch, they did have the unit set up. They did have demonstrations taking place on the device and even a demo unit that you could open up there. So again, again, PC Watch, well done, link below. But also... They're kind of way ahead on this, uh, a lot further ahead on this than I thought they would be, particularly because there was no hide or hair of this system at Computex just a few months ago. Um, so again, it'd be great to find out more about what's going to be happening with this. But just before we tail out, I just want to talk a little bit about 25 GBE and its affordability. Now, yes, 25 gig networking, notwithstanding, you can't just take advantage of traditional um, cat cabling. You are going to have to go straight into fiber cabling there. Um, but 
there are workarounds, such as, and we talked about this on the channel before, that QNAP adapter. We talked about it during their Computex partnered event, and more importantly, the fact that they now are going to be rolling out a USB 4 to 25 gig adapter there. There's going to be the 10 gig dual port one, as you can see here on screen, but the USB 4 to 25 gig adapter is going to significantly lessen the access point into 25 gig networking, which again, I think it's just part and parcel of the way we're seeing the trends go in terms of a lot of these devices that are home lab ready. Um, and of course, alongside that, Unify, although they already have some 25 gig stuff in their lineup, along with modules, as you can see there, again, a lot of us who kind of work with Unify already know that there are several significant 25 gig solutions being discussed. So again, Definitely the time to start thinking about 25 gig if you want to harness the performance of those M.2s, but also if you want to really maximize what a lot of these CPUs are going to be capable of. And yes, this is not your common garden mini PC. This is definitely something a lot more specialized. But nonetheless, this frankly excites me. And it was enough for me to probably bugger up getting to the airport in a few hours to start talking about but what do you guys think is this going to be your next big purchase in 2026 because let's be realistic it's going to be a wee while before we see this but let me know what you guys think but apart from that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time